I make Julie be fixed something for them to eat. Oh, they must be sure to be hungry. Say, have we had a time. <coughs> Adventures? Yes, sir, lots of adventure. Just my luck. I always miss out on those things. We got chased through the trees by a herd of wild pigs. Pigs? Yes, sir, and we had to travel through the treetops to get away from them. And we fed them green mangoes until they all got tummy aches, and then we escaped them. I wouldn't say that was a bopper, but it is not so easy to believe. No, it's an honest to goodness truth, Kiki. That's just what happened. Real wild pigs? Let's go out and hunt them so we can have sausages for breakfast. No, we have to hunt them before we get through. But not until we got some bows and arrows and spears we can depend on. Are they really dangerous? Yes, Sir Julie, they really are. And until we can figure out some way to round up those pigs, we'll have to be mighty careful how we travel about this island. Oh, dear. Say, Binnacle, you don't suppose there's any chance of them coming down tonight? Well, there's a chance, and, and that's why we're going to sleep on the raft. Ah, oh, I think I will take a chance on the pigs again. I do not want to sleep on the water. Oh, uh, just for tonight, Katie. Tomorrow we'll make us a barricade of thorn bushes or something, so we'll be safe. Well, if it has to be, it has to be. Now get your blankets and things, and we'll shove the raft out into the lake a ways. Bobby, <coughs> let me find a rock for an anchor. Aye, aye, sir. Time passes. Wow, things sure look brighter when there's sunlight. Yeah, it is very strange. But in the sunlight, things do look much brighter. I can't understand it. Well, you know what I mean. Well, in order that things maybe is not so bad as last night as they seem they were. Exactly. Well, we slept pretty good. We got a good breakfast, and we've got a big <coughs> island here to conquer today. And a drove of wild pigs. Oh, we can't outsmart a herd, a herd of wild pigs. We aren't very good. Now, no use fooling ourselves about those pigs. I dreamed about pigs all night. That's too bad, Saturday. No, sir, it was nice. I had a big mess of pork chops to eat, and Miss Katie, she made us crackle and bread and bacon and pig's feet and, and everything. <laughs> Saturday's got the right idea about them pigs, all right. And that's what I'm figuring on. What do you mean? Well, we either got to kill them or pen them up somewhere, or our lives won't be safe. And if we have to kill them, we don't want to waste them. Shucks, you could use everything about a pig but a squeal. You can give me the squeals for whistles. That's an idea. <laughs> now, let's take stock of this situation. First thing we've got to do is build a wall. A fort? Yeah, sort of. A barricade, anyway. There are a whole lot of thorn bushes growing up on that slope. We'll cut them down and build a thorn wall right in front of the cave. No pigs or anything else would be able to get through that. Then what next? Then we gotta get several days' supplies of food. Oh yeah, and we've gotta start collecting salt. Yeah, salt. Yeah. <laughs> well, after you see salt, we'll need a lot so we can salt down some of the pigs. Have to build a smokehouse so we can smoke some hands too. But the first most important thing, after we get the thorn wall built, is weapons. Too bad we haven't got the shotgun. Well, we haven't, and that's that. But we've got some cord, we've got our knives, we'll make some bows and arrows and some spears, and I need that harpoon, too, to spear some sharks. Binnacle, are we going to stay here for a long time? No, Julie. We'll have to stay here until we solve the pig problem. Until we get rid of those pigs, this is the safest place. I know, just watchers. Whenever I think of all those little pork chops running around on the, on the island loose like, I haven't had me a pork chop in so long I wouldn't even have even knew one. I sure <laughs> wish we had a corral to keep them in. <laughs> Say, if we could only find a big cave, we could drive it into them and them into it and pan them up. Uh, as soon as we get some weapons made and can defend ourselves, we'll look for a place like that. Hope we can find one. 
Well, maybe then there's another thing we've got to do is get a flagstaff up on the top of that hill and fly a signal flag so it will be seen by any ship that's passing. I almost forgot about being rescued. I suppose we'll be rescued sometime. I've about given up hope. I don't suppose it will be so bad. But I hate to think of Jinky growing up without a college education. <laughs> hey, if we stay on this island, then till Pinky's old enough to go to college, we'll we'll start a college of our own. Oh, that'll be wonderful. But we got a lot of years to worry about that here, and there's other things that have to be done right away. So I reckon we better get busy. Oh, won't we do a new old fishing? Yes, I reckon you better do some fishing. And keep your eyes open for turtles, too, Saturday. We could use some turtle meat and some turtle eggs if we could find them. <laughs> oh, I am here eating. Say, what was that? I'm afraid to give it a name. It, it can't be so. Well, I'm not. It was a rooster. It sure was, and you can't fool me about a chicken. <laughs> Wait a minute, Saturday. Don't go rushing off. That means something. It may mean fresh eggs. That would be a lot better than those old turtle eggs any day. Listen, where you find chickens, you usually find people. There may be people on this island, and we've got to find out. Is Faraway Island inhabited? Boy, how will that crowing be its prey? <laughs> 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 Looks like more strange things are due to happen. So don't forget to listen in Tuesday night and hear what happens next to the castaways. Robinson Crusoe Jr. is sent to you every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the same time. Thank you for listening. Now, the romance of Helen Trent. Helen Trent was a radio soap opera which aired on CBS from 1933 to 1960. The storyline revolved around a 35-year-old dressmaker who fascinates men as she works her way up to become the chief Hollywood costume designer. During the 7,222 episodes, more than any other soap, Helen was never married, and she always remained at the age of 35. However, she had a long-running bow. Here with me, from 1939, we now bring you a typical episode from the radio soap opera, The Romance of Helen Trent. The cast will be Helen Trent, Joanna. Gil, the handsome lawyer who's in love with Helen, Dory. Brett, a multimillionaire who's also in love with Helen Morris. Say, a beautiful but evil temptress, me. Sound effects, Lisa. Music, Evelyn, and the announcer, Jerry. Once again, we bring you the romance of Helen Trent, who sets out to prove for herself what so many women long to prove, that because a woman is 35 or more, romance need not be over. The romance can live in life at 35 and after. Lovely Helen Trent, deeply in love with the handsome lawyer Gil Whitney, faces the most desperate hour of her romance as Faye Granville, an adventuress as beautiful as she is evil, has trapped Gil into a false promise to marry her and is on the eve of announcing it. Yesterday we heard Gil say to Helen, Help, darling, this was devised by an evil woman. I love you, Helen. I never asked Faye to marry me, but she's trying to force it. Somehow I'll find my way out. Gil. There's only one way to find out Faye Granville's past. If you could prove she's a notorious woman, if you could just... I've tried, Helen. I've... Faye's just covered her tracks too well. Then, Gil, I'm going to try. There must be someone, somewhere, who knew Faye Granville once. Faye and her brother Darcy are as ruthless as they're clever. <laughs> They'll stop at nothing to harm you if it suits them. That's the hold they have over us, darling. Stay away from them. But Helen has already taken steps to find out who Faye Granville is. Greg Chapman, the multimillionaire who is still in love with Faye, with Helen, with whom and whom Gil hates jealously, 
Lord, help us not 